Okay, so here's my other try at explaining roots, bases, and stems. Roots, bases, and stems. So, much like a plant has a root, something under the ground you can't see, a base, the first part of a plant you can see, and a stem, which can lead to flowers or leaves. So it's the same in linguistics. The root is underneath everything, the base is the first word form, and stem can branch out. So let's look at these one by one. First, our root. Roots are the smallest lexeme, unit, of a language that carries meaning. In Korean, you can have hanto roots, like de, big. It is the root of words, like de hak and tue de, but it is not a word itself. It is the same in English. Destabilize has the prefix d and the suffix eyes, but the part of the word that has meaning is stabil. This is the root, but it's not a word on its own. Roots are used to make words, and they can change. Destabilize. Stability. Stable. The root of all these words is stabil, from the Latin word stabilis. Stabilis. I don't know. I don't speak Latin. Another popular root in English is neo. It has no meaning on its own, but put in a word, it means new. Neophyte, new plus like. So a root is the smallest lexeme with meaning. So what's a base? So for a base is the next step up. The big difference is that a base has to be a word. The base of friendship is friend. That is the small English word that carries the base meaning of the bigger word. The base of destabilize is stable because that is the smallest English word base. The base of durability is durable. The base of durably is durable. Now, if you dig deeper, you can find the root. The root is the Latin word durabilis. But that's not an English word, so it can't be a base. The base has to be a word in English. So, a Korean word like jayon sorupta would have the base word jayon, which is a word in Korean, as you know. You can dig deeper and find the roots, ja and yon. So, when you see a big TOEFL word like aristocracy, government by the best people, you can relate it to its base word, aristocrat, a member of the ruling class or nobility. Base words are concrete and helpful. If you dig deeper and find the Greek root word, aristos, the best, that can get confusing because now you're filling your head with things that aren't English words. So, the root is the smallest lexeme, the smallest unit of language that carries specific meaning. The base is the smallest, simplest form of a word, a real word. So, what's a stem? A stem of a word is the word before it undergoes grammatical inflections, plurals, tense changes. Stems are really easy to see in Korean. It is the infinitive form, hada, gada, nolda. But in English, the stem is the biggest form of a word without inflections. So if you have the word photographers, the stem is photographer. Just get rid of the S. You don't need to find the base or root, just eliminate the grammar. 
Look at the word blackened. It is the past tense of the word blacken. The wall was blackened after the fire. The stem of the word is blacken. If you find the base word, it is black. That is where the meaning comes from. But blacken, to make black, has a different meaning. You just have to get rid of the past tense ed to find the stem. So a stem is the biggest form of a word with a distinct meaning, without grammatical changes. So when does it get complicated? Sometimes the root and base are the same thing. Take the word winner. The base, smallest word with meaning, is win. The root is also win. The word win doesn't take another form. So you, the root is win, the base word is win, and from this root and base word, you can make winner, winsome, winningly, won. But the base and root are the same. In fact, this is so common that many people consider base and root to be the same thing. And if you look at the sentence, Suyun wins all the time. What is the stem of win? When you take out the inflection S, yep, it's win again. So for some words, usually short ones, the root, base, and stem can all be the same. So why? Why do we have these terms? In some languages, roots, stems, and bases are very different and easy to spot. In English, it is tougher. But linguists need these terms to talk not only about English, but about German, Russian, and Chinese. So it's very good to have these terms when comparing different languages. So anyway, I hope that this explained it a little better. If not, well, maybe another teacher will be able to help you a little more.